Take a look at this. Here's a hip right alongside a valley. Remember that the heel stand of the hip is calculated along the side of the rafter where it runs through the plate line. And the heel stand of the valley is to the center line. You can, if you calculate the hip to the center line, you have to back it. If you calculate the valley to the side, you have to raise it and back it with a V. The nice thing about these is they're both the same length. Look, so the hip is set down further than the valley. The valley is raised up. Now, a lot of people haven't even ever seen this around here. There's a lot of what's called the supporting valley, which is what this is because they want to vault it underneath. And if they put a header there to pick up the weight, all the weight of that entire thing would just be on this one hip here on one side and uh, on the other side, it would be on a jack rafter. You can see that, right? We have to go all the way over to a common way over there and there may not even be one in this roof, you know? So they, they do this, well, where it stacks at the top, it's a valley, so it stacks to center line, which means this side of it, as it, when it passes the ridge here, this side of it is too high. Everything, all the jacks play into the center line. And so you'll see this jack here is stacked low and that those two lines are there to show you where the backing begins and ends. Starting here, running all the way up to the top, it has to be backed from the center line over so it'll plane in with the rest of the roof on the other side, whereas the hip the sides playing in with the comments and it's fine. Now you can see where the backing angle would be, right? It would be a point on the top of the hip, in which case the sides would line up and the center would line up, but that would mean that you would have to use the center line of the hip at, for the heel stand at the bottom. Now let's look over here at this side here, which is interesting because this could be a hip, right? But instead, it's a valley for two gable ends. There's a gable end right there and a gable end right there. You see that? It's a valley going up to two gable ends, but it's landing on the corner. Now, you have a choice now. The heel stand is on all valleys or to center line unless you raise them and V them, back them. So you have a choice. You could run these commons down to the outside. In other words, you could run this common all the way down to the outside corner, take an inch and a half deduction off of this common. And then you, you could cut the valley to die into it. Normally a valley would have an overhang, right? So it's not usually done that way. It's done this way. But regardless, you have to calculate these two jack rafters as though it were commons. And they had a full on seat cut and height above plate on both of them before you then remark them. That is to say, you'll draw the line as though it were a full, full common both of them and then you'll subtract this one inch and a sixteenth because the 45 thickness of a two by four is two and an eighth half of that which is from the point to the side of the long point of the jack is an inch and a sixteenth so you take the com full length common rafter for this run here this and the same for this one here which by the way are different you can see this ridge is lower so this run is, on this side, is greater than this run. You calculate the full length common rafter, subtract one in a sixteenth of an inch to the long point, and cut this one. Same with this one. Here we have another situation where you have a valley, supporting valley that runs up, which, by the way, is the same length as that hip and that supporting valley. So there's three framing members that are the same length. This ridge is higher though. You still have to subtract a little bit of wood up there where it runs past the ridge to get it out of the way of the plane for the bottom of the sheeting. Yep. Engineers spec that supporting valley a lot around here.